Hello and welcome back to Enjirati Studio at, here at EUSUW, uh, which is the EU Sustainable Energy Week. And uh, we're uh, now joined by uh, Giancarlo, who is uh, uh, involved in the Mill Secure uh, 2050 project. And uh, before we start, could you give us an introduction to the project? Yeah, there's no problem. I mean, the My Secure 2050 project uh, is uh, a project financed in the seventh framework program of the European Union. It's a project that will last for three and a half. It's led by Politecnico di Torino and it involves uh, a partnership of 11 members scattered around Europe, some Italian, some Polish, some French and so on. And what it does, what it aims to do, because it's not finished yet, yeah, we're just in the beginning, mm -hmm. is to try to understand what uh, could be the potential impact of a transition towards a low carbon society on energy security. Right. So uh, so this uh, this is in the uh, uh, this is in the context of what you what you you you're trying to figure out some sort of roadmap of creating a transition and the impacts of that transition, is that right? Yeah, with some exception in the sense that uh, we try in the beginning to define what energy security means. Uh, in other words, uh, what does it mean uh, for a system to be energy secure? We find out that uh, energy security means that the system needs to be able to absorb or to adapt to threats. And uh, those threats are of different natures, of course, and therefore an energy secure system is secure if uh, it holds some uh, properties. We define some properties, of course, as a theoretical literature that we analyze and we define so that. So this is uh, to yeah. do with resilience and things Exactly. Like Resist mm -hmm. Resilience, uh, uh, capacity to absorb, uh, robustness, flexibility, and so on and so forth. Uh, afterwards, when we found out what do, you, what do we mean by energy secure system, what we want to find out to the time horizon 2000 and f uh, of 2050 is what could be the potential impact for energy security of a transition toward a low carbon society. All this discourse of uh, you know, climate change, uh, reduction of greenhouse mm -hmm. gas emission, we want not to use any more carbon energy, I mean carbon-based energy, so gas, uh, uh, oil and so on, instead move to renewable sources uh, or low carbon sources. But this uh, is not necessarily leading to a more energy secure society because the prices may rise, because availability of those sources may not be here in Europe and so on and so forth. So what you found is that actually the uh, tr just focusing on going, uh, uh, driving down carbon doesn't actually may generate the right mix. I is that what you're saying? Or, or, or the, the, the two things need to be more harmonized? There needs to be res uh, research made on that because there are no studies yet that says, I mean, that explicit uh, the potential trade offs between uh, running towards a low carbon society and energy security. Uh, to, to make an example, when you, when you want, when you aim to reduce uh, carbon emission, then you need to reduce the use of uh, fossil fuels. No? Mm. To reduce the use of fossil fuel it means that you need to go for other sources that may be more expensive. But when you define energy security as uh, the potential, uh, the possibility for a system to provide energy to the users at uh, a reasonable cost, then maybe that uh, to go for low carbon sources will rise the cost and therefore so will not be energy secure anymore yeah, for the users. Yeah, so yeah. It's potential to adopt the need to be discovered. Mm. Mm. How do we do that? I mean, this uh, project that we are running uh, started since its inception as multidisciplinary because those issue needs uh, a lot of expertise in order to be dealt with in a correct way. So you need economists, you, exactly. need, uh, you need technologists and so on. Exactly. In our group we have uh, quantitative analysts. We have uh, colleagues from Paris which are very much into techno-economic modeling. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Quantitative analysis, everything translated into numbers, into models to make uh, yeah, forecasting scenarios. On the other hand, we also have uh, geographers, like some colleague of mine, we have economists, we have sociologists, uh, I'm myself a planner, a special planner. So all these competencies uh, are translated into what we call a systemic multidisciplinary approach to energy security. So what you're, what you're trying to create here is some sort of modeling or model framework whereby you can test different assertions and 
see what the output is without uh, testing it on real human beings. Yeah, but basically it is, it is yeah, something similar. I mean, with the model, you insert input, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you get out output at a certain period of time, yeah? With mm -hmm. a certain time horizon. Mm -hmm. But for us, it's 2050, yeah? That is from this, the title of the project. And of course, the preliminary work for building a model is to translate things into numbers, also qualitative information. Therefore, this is the real uh, challenge for the project, to make the disciplines talk, yeah? mm. to hinge them somehow. Mm. Because when we make qualitative analysis from a sociological and geographical planning point of view, an economic point of view, but just qualitative information, then you need to, fact to factor them into input that fit the model. Mm. And this is uh, exactly the point where we are now. Mm. Yeah? We produce uh, some uh, research uh, from a uh, uh, macro-regional perspective. We analyze macro-regional trend uh, from uh, yeah, energy, energy situation in the world and in Europe from geopolitical perspectives. We analyze uh, some quantitative scenarios and so on. And then we did a sort of bottom-up research uh, uh, trying to discover all around Europe what we called anticipatory experiences. Mm -hmm. So small, tiny examples of, uh, s of yeah, experiences that are anticipatory in, in an ant anticipatory way sort of uh, already try to put in place this transition towards a low mm. carbon society. So for can example... You, uh, can you mention a few of those? Uh, just to yeah, there is, there is one district in Luxembourg that is very well known. Although I don't remember the names exactly, of mm. course, but yeah. And, uh, and uh, Copenhagen also. And uh, well, we had a list of hundreds of them. Then, of course, we did preliminary recognition, our colleagues from Rome did it, on all these experiences. And then 23 of them were explored in detail through yeah, mm. uh, face to face interviews and so on. What, what is the issue? Is that uh, in order to promote transition towards low carbon society, it's not only making policies, yeah? mm. it's also changing the behavioral attitude of the people mm. toward that. So you, so you were taking these, these, these micro projects and micro experiences and, and, and taking the data or the learnings that they had and use them as input into the bigger, uh, into the bigger model. This is what we need to do. Right, okay. Exactly. So, you're do, you're so do, that's it's, not the, it's not the data, but what you say correctly is the learning, yeah? mm. the knowledge there. Those people that we interviewed for those experience are the, at the forefront of the debate, yeah? mm. in the sense that those are the people that are really in their mind uh, made can the transition. Yeah, c can you bring one of those to life in terms of, I mean, d d d just giving us a bit more detail about just, just one of those uh, projects that you interviewed, just uh, well, to tell us? I, I, don't have the, I don't have at the moment the detail of one of them, but the point is that those are projects that are really, because of their realization, had mm. an impact uh, on reducing emission. Yeah. So the, so the, For the, example, the, the, uh, district mm. that uh, are self energy self sustainable, yeah, right. For solar panels, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, just so, a so very the, the simple yeah, example. So, so they've already th they've already put it in. Th 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 they're on their journey. They've fulfilled yeah. some criteria of uh, things that you yeah. need. Other yeah. some some are about uh, heating, mm. heating the district. Some are about sustainable transport. Yeah. So everything mm. which could be. Apply Le to yeah, a macro level, yeah, yeah. and leading uh, to a reduction of usage of uh, carbon, mm. yeah, carbon uh, sources. Mm. And uh, so, so, with the uh, with the project and and, and this uh, uh, investigator uh, investigation into the transition to uh, to a low um, economy s society, I mean, whenever you had undertake a project like that, th then <coughs> th there is a reason for it. You know, th th there is a pressure that's uh, that creates the genesis of the project. And for you, what was that particular pressure? I mean, what, what are we looking at discovering here that we perhaps, um, so I, I'm gonna make this very simplistic just to illustrate my point, that we can't uh, necessarily let the market, the way it's running, just run its course. I mean. Okay, mm. European Union is very interested into this subject. It is the uh, European Union as uh, DG on energy. It is uh, putting in place in many years energy policies. Mm -hmm. Member states do the same. Yeah? There is always the question of competencies for energy between the European sure. Union and the member states and so on. And our studies show so how the situation within the different member states of Europe is quite scattered. But you want to say promote towards the vision of low carbon society and so on. It does it through policy. Policies that have a real impact on uh, how policymakers act and so on, how things goes on mm -hmm. in our society, mm -hmm. but it also does it through promoting research in order to break through 
with new knowledge right. that may inform further policy making. Right. And uh, what personally, uh, me and, my, and the team that I work for in Torino, uh, the, our reason for undertaking such a project, uh, were to try to propose an innovative approach to the concept, to the, uh, to the issue of energy security and low carbon society. The yeah, traditional approach are usually, as I say in the beginning, technoeconomic model on the mm -hmm. quantitative mm -hmm. impact. Mm -hmm. While we wanted to factor in all other more uh, discipline from the social, social sciences, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in order to provide that value, because it is not only, uh, for example, to have policy measure that uh, uh, oblige, uh, for example, factories, yeah, industry enterprises to consume less, mm -hmm. but it is also to produce an impact on how society is thinking, so on behavior. Of Society. So, so, so it's it's trying to put across the model that really illustrates the inter interconnectedness of things. So, if you suddenly uh, um, want to make uh, factories uh, produce less or consume less, that can have a societal impact because they might move somewhere else. Yes, for example. But uh, it doesn't be done in a soft way, of course. Mm -hmm. That's why if you impose it, then mm -hmm. it doesn't work. But if you if you work on both sides, on mm -hmm. the one end, putting policies and yeah, constraints, let's say, mm -hmm. and on the other end, fostering uh, the change through provision of knowledge and information on, for example, climate change is a bad issue, mm -hmm. and we need to deal with it. Mm -hmm. No, you, you so may you may allow for a smoother transition, I would mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and uh, and all uh, all of that makes sense. And uh, and what I, what I'd like to ask <coughs> you just. Uh, and perhaps bring it back down to a more uh, personal level. You, you know, you're a, uh, uh, you're a planner, like you, like you said. Uh, uh, and in the journey of where you are within the, within this project, what are some of the things that you've learned? Um, you know, in this context that you perhaps didn't know before. I mean, for me, it's, uh, this is extremely important, very much. Mm. Personally, I mean, uh, in my previous research, I deal with other issues. I deal with. Uh, Europeanization of special planning, basically the impact of the EU on the member state and vice versa in the field of uh, yeah, town and country planning. Mm -hmm. uh, I enter this project as a policy analyst because of uh, my multi-scalar, uh, multi-level approach to policy making mm -hmm. yeah, related to planning though not to energy. And therefore everything what I have been telling to you now concerning energy security and low carbon studies for me is new. I learned it in the past uh, uh, 16 months, I think we are now at the 16 month of the project, mm. or oh, 18, sorry. Mm. So but and, and when you knowledge. And, and, and when, you, when, you, when, you, when you take knowledge on board, you, uh, uh, and it's always interesting when you take new knowledge on board and you come from a, uh, from a, uh, from a separate, mm. uh, uh, separate discipline, uh, there are usually a number of outputs. One of them is, why does this industry do this in this way? This seems crazy to me, I still don't get it. Uh, or there, uh, or there, uh, there is another output where you, where you go, uh, look, th 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 this is never going to work, or, or or something like that. Could you, uh, the reason why I ask you that is because uh, you know I, I'd like to bring some of these th things to life and try and uh, put across that by combining all these multidisciplines, we really un un uh, illustrate the complexity of what it is we're trying to do globally. Yeah, that's exactly the difficult part, actually, mm. is, and this is where we are stuck at the moment. Yeah? Mm. The real challenge of the project is to do this. It's experimental. I mean, nobody ever did it before. So, uh, yeah, uh, to a certain extent, I could say that sometimes I ask myself, as you say, well, well this is how to do this is going to work, mm. but this is what we are doing. And we are m when uh, you have different scientists that deal with different things, it's hard in the beginning to make them talk together. Mm -hmm. you know? But after 18 months, uh, I can see that this is happening. Mm -hmm. This is happening. For example, we are now into the process of translating uh, the outputs of this anticipatory experience into variables that can be then be used in the models. And this is already some fa fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have the, we have a, mo a model that has been uh, I mean has been uh, produced by our French colleague. They didn't take into account this uh, some variables uh, like the one we are dealing with now before. But now those person open their mind in the, into this direction, and the person they did the anticipatory experience trying to try, try to think in a, uh, through another language. Let's say, yeah, it's, ma it's a matter of translation, mm -hmm. and, um, and it's working quite quite well, I would say. We will see. We still have uh, yeah, some uh, twenty months to go. Yeah. So, uh, as we're coming to the end of our time here, and uh, and it's been fascinating talking to you. And I, again, the reason why I wanted to is is I, I felt that. Uh, 
uh, you know, with all the talk that is happening, it, 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 a lot of people are coming at uh, things from one agenda or one dim uh, dimension, and it's not as simple as that. And mm. uh, you know, uh, this interview has perfectly illustrated why it isn't as simple as that. When you finish in twenty months uh, uh, time, uh, w what is the ideal output that you're hoping for? The ideal output are basically two. As a model, a technoeconomic model that has received the input from the social sciences that can be used really to explore with evidences yeah, the potential trade-off between low carbon society and energy security. And by doing that, this can be at the service of policy makers, but also of actors that work in this energy governance, yeah? governance of energy. The other is a, a manifesto of recommendation for policy makers. Yeah? And this is, comes from the model, but also from other elements that we take from the project. And it's a manifesto that may inform the activity of those people that deal actually in their daily activity with that. If people want to know more information about it, they can go to the website of the project. It is www.mysecure. Uh, I think it's dash. Right? Uh, M-I-L-E secure dash ah, 2050. Dot EU, exactly. Dot EU. Okay, so we have all the public deliverables there. Everything is available for free. We have also a Twitter account, we have a Facebook account, and just Google for MySecure 2050, you find everything. Perfect, and what we will do, uh, thank you, because that's all we've got time for. If you're watching this video on Angelati, all of those website links will be in the article below that. Um, if they aren't, someone hasn't done their job properly, email me and uh, we'll get it over to you, but that pretty much should be the case. Uh, thank you for watching this uh, uh, interview. I've very much enjoyed it. And the, again, the reason why we wanted to do this interview is just to show the, the, the complexity of the challenge ahead uh, within Europe uh, in terms of the, not just uh, driving towards a low carbon society, but a sustainable low carbon society. I think that's, uh, that's the key phrase here. Yeah. Thanks again for watching and thank you as well. Thank you for